So take literally any mechanical or technological device. We all know if it's easier to take apart, then it's easier to repair. Well, exactly the same applies to lithium ion battery packs. The easier they are to take apart, the easier they are to fix them during their life or to recycle them eventually at the end of their very, very long and useful life. And that's what they do here. This is Volta. They build battery packs that are easier to take apart and put back together. So that is Volta, and this is The Fully Charged Show. Like Fully Charged? You'll love our fun-packed Everything Electric Expos around the world. Next up, Australia and London. Remember, energy and transport professionals go free on the first day. So if, if I heard about this, I thought, I want, I want a Volta battery in my house because I want recyclable batteries. Is this what we, is this kind of, how, how would that package arrive in your house? And that? Yeah, this is the, I guess the pack level. Right. There is usually a metal shroud that sits over the top of that. Right. But this is a 14 kilowatt hour, 48 okay. volt battery. Oh wow, that's, that is more than I thought for this size. That's quite a lot, right. Yeah, look, loosely speaking, it, it's not necessarily the most sought after um, metric in the stationary storage field, but we think it's really close to being one of the most energy dense yeah. lithium ion phosphate got... batteries in the world. Yeah. yeah, that is really impressive. So, too, that's, that's, so I mean, I'm, I'm only comparing it to the painfully obvious Tesla Powerwall, which I think is 13.5 kilowatt hours. Yeah, different chemistry. It's as ours, well. different chemistry, yeah, yes. Yeah, um, the Tesla Powerwall is an uh, NMC battery. Right. And, and I, I think it also has an inverter built in. So it does, and it has all the controls built typically in. Typically, this would then go into a, a cabinet style system. Right. And then um, there would be more, there would be another a bit of a battery make, management. Uh, yeah, uh, so the battery stuff. management system is in oh, here. Oh, right. So that's sitting behind this this um, right. product here. So, yeah. and then you've got the the power system, and then basically these cables will connect up to essentially deliver that capacity. Right. They will stay as a 48 volt battery, so they uh, typically are installed with a low voltage um, hybrid or or battery inverter. Right. Uh, and that's basically your system. So for residential system, this is usually more than enough. Yeah. But for a, a larger off-grid system, we've gone up to say three of these in parallel. So right. that's around 40 odd uh, kilowatt yeah. hours or just, just shy of 40 odd kilowatt hours. Um, some people use two, right. two batteries for say around 28 kilowatt yeah. hours. Um, so it's, it, this is kind of the, the, the core product that we make. We right. do make a five kilowatt hour system as well. Right. But I'd say far and wide, 80% of the product that we send it's out is usually size. this 14 kilowatt yeah. hour system. That is, uh, I'm, I'm, impre I'm more impressed. I was already impressed, but now I'm more impressed. Volta don't stop at 14 kilowatt hours. They also make battery packs for commercial and grid scale storage up to a whopping 150 kilowatt hours. In Australia, thanks to the high uptake of solar and volatile electricity prices, the energy storage market is booming and there are over 500 different batteries to choose from. But Volta are keen to make their packs easy to recycle and are doing things a little differently. So can you explain what the difference is that you do? Because it does look different to, yes, we even to the untrained eye. We don't use welding to put right. batteries together. And the reason for that is it allows us to disassemble right. the battery and repair at the cell level. So not just the cell itself, but also the cables, the, the, um, the battery management system and the connectors are all designed to be interacted with throughout the lifetime of the battery. And what that means is we can repair and avoid any sort of battery waste, which is the big reason why we exist. We exist to solve energy sustainability. Right. So the difference is really just, we don't spot weld the batteries, which opens up the opportunity for us to be able to disassemble over and over So you again. can kind of unbolt it and take that yes. one, you could take one cell out yes. effectively. That's right, yeah. So with this one here, I mean, they've got a, they've got a threaded terminal. So that allows us to essentially screw down right. and get that fixture. With a cylindrical cell, we've had to introduce our own technology that's around. Oh, so you do do packs with cylindrical cells as well, because I've only seen these. We're, we're working on packs right. with <laughs> cylindrical cells. So it's, it's very much the R&D sort of side right. of the business. So the technology around cylindrical cells means that you actually need to pressurize them because they don't have that threaded terminal. Right. So, right. Welding, so make the, welding to make works. the contact, you've got to have <laughs> yeah. some, you've got so to So contact resistance is the enemy, right. which causes heat yeah. and, and essentially causes a battery to degrade. So the challenge that we're you know, working to overcome 
is that you have a, uh, a connection between the batteries that isn't welded, yeah. that doesn't generate that heat and contact resistance right. that you can use for initially applications like this, but as we grow towards other applications like consumer products, right. um, EVs or light EVs in right. particular, um, you know, I think at any given time, there's a lot of stick vacuum batteries circulating yeah. towards landfill or towards waste. Yeah. So, you know, those sorts of areas are really good applications right. for the. For so it's not, it's not so much a, a cost differentiation. I mean, I, I have no idea, but with the, the same amount of cylindrical cells that are in one of those packs in terms of energy, de uh, energy capacity, would they be cheaper or more expensive than those? I, I don't know what the difference is. Uh, horses for causes. Right. Um, cylindrical cells work really well for a higher voltage application in a smaller package right. because you can essentially build up the series connection yeah. for that higher voltage. What we found is that prismatic cells are really well suited towards this application, particularly a lower voltage, right. which is a 48 volt application for these. We found that the cost of the cells is is really effective for this application. Right, right. Uh, you're less at the mercy of you know, the US dollar or right. you know, variations in costs right. um, of raw materials that end up flowing down. The less of that you have to deal with, ultimately, it just means yeah. you have a more stably priced product. And presumably, there, if there are, I mean, there's so many developments in battery chemistries at yes. the moment, but they, it would be perfectly possible to have a variety of battery chemistries in one of those packs. Yeah, that's right. So that yeah. you could use different, you know, as the packs develop, you could continue to... That's, that's one of the sort of, I guess, the future mandates for the company is that we, as... One of the reasons why it exists is because cell technology was going really, really fast. Yeah. But the way we packaged them was right. just not catching. It was not keeping up. Right. So I'm not a battery chemist, yeah. but I know that there's a lot of great minds in that space. Yeah. So as that goes, we can... If this were to carry the same cell format, we can just use a different cell. Yeah. If it's a different chemistry, um, if it's more energy packed into the same capacity, yeah. then we don't really need to change a lot. We can just gradually upgrade yeah, that battery right. as we go. Right. So that's one of the benefits of being able to reuse and, and um, yeah. disassemble down to the cell level. Because I mean, that is the thing then, once you, what, I don't know what kind of uh, age range we're looking at, but it's many years, I think it's fair to say, for a static storage yeah. battery. Yeah. But once that really has- 10 got, plus, yeah. Yeah, so once it's gone, Let's, say, let's go 15 years. It still works, it's still got capacity, but it's, it's dropped. Hmm. So then you can break these apart. And then as, as an individual cell, that blue box, still is that much happened. easier to, yes. to recycle the materials that are in there? Initially, you want to check for a reuse application. Right. So if you have a repair situation that needs to take place some, through some sort of fault, um, which is inevitable or, or general degradation, yeah. it's inevitable. Um, if you can access the cells for a second life application right. from a business perspective that actually allows you to sell the battery again right. uh, but it also means you're closing the loop on that circularity you're reusing it uh, you might have one cell fail but rather than discard the whole battery right. you can reuse 15 of those cells yeah. and that other one can go into a secondary application right. so what that means is that you're getting all of the life out of the battery yeah. which is really important for a finite element like lithium but then when it comes time to actually recycle and end the life of that battery, that it's easy to do that without right. having to process you know, plastics and other yeah. you know, basic metals and, and overall you know, package size. Yeah. So actually, I mean, I'm probably getting slightly wrong in the stick because I'm thinking, oh, it's, you can, well, at the end of life, you can recycle. What you're actually talking about is that there, at the end of life is such a, a, as many steps yes. to it. Yeah. Because it's going to be used in different places in different That's right. Yeah. End facilities. of life is, is the very last step, as yeah. it should be. So yeah. actually, yeah. we're probably talking more like 20, 25 years of total lifespan of a battery. That's, that's a really good question because we don't know. there's a okay, lot of battery yeah. companies that haven't been around for 10 years, often yeah. 10 year warranties, and, and we're no different. So it's yeah. a challenge we need to accept. It's, of course, the risk of the industry is that we're still relatively early yeah. Yeah. Uh, and figuring these things out as we go. But what we know is that for a finite material, for things that are very valuable, they should be harnessed as long as possible. Yeah, yeah. And used for as many applications as possible without having the hurdles of saying, okay, now I've got a 100 kilo battery, what am I gonna do with this? Yeah. We need to remove the, the vagueness of that question yeah. and make it a very clinical, at this situation, there's a repair that takes place. Yeah. And if that's not possible, it gets recycled, right, and it leaves no no stone unturned yeah. to make that happen. Because that's the, I mean, it, it is a, 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 I think that's the the myth that I always want to underline is, 
you know, we, it's like um, when you, you can run out of a liquid fuel and you really do run out yes. and it stops and it won't go again, but you, you kind of don't run out of a battery, you just kind of have less fuel each time you fill it. So stationary storage is the really critical piece of the puzzle when it comes to managing uh, renewable energy sources, intermittent energy sources. You want to be able to store as much energy as you can in one of these amazing systems. And one of the critically important parts of that is that during the long life of this battery pack, it is built in a way that you can maintain it while it's running. You can swap out cells and put new ones in without having to rip the whole thing to bits. And also, at the end of its very long and productive life, you can take this whole thing apart and recycle it much, much easier. So I'm really impressed with the early steps that Volta are taking. I really hope that they, they go gangbusters in the future. There is uh, plenty of other episodes about the circular economy that are on the screen now that you can see. And as always, if you have been, thank you for watching. <music>